Good afternoon, everybody. Keeper Eric here. Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live. Uh, kind of an odd time, but it's a good time to see the otters. We're going to feed them just a minute. Keeper Ann is going to come and help in just a second. And until then, we'll just watch them run around and swim and we'll talk about them. If you've never been able to make one of our 1030 chats before, what we do is we just show you the animals, we talk about them, and then you guys can ask questions about the animals or about what we were talking about. So, um, oh, we've already got a great question from Danielle, who's five. She wants to know, how do we tell them apart? Well, we'll get into specifics in a minute, but we have three otters right now. And you can see the one in the log is smaller than the other two. That is the baby. She was born here in February. And so she's real obvious to tell who's who. And then... Uh, dad is Spencer and mom is Tallulah and I believe that um, Tallulah is a little smaller than Spencer. I could be wrong. Here's Keeper Ann. We already had a question and I was trying to remember who's smaller and who's bigger. Is Tallulah bigger or is Spencer bigger? I believe Spencer is the bigger one. That's what I thought too. Yep. So. That's how we tell them apart. Um, why don't you go ahead and talk about what you're doing and talk okay. about the otters then, Anne. So these are our North American River otters. Um, Tallulah is our female. She is about nine years old. We have our baby. That's uh, Spencer and Tallulah's uh, daughter. She is five months old. And then we have Spencer, our male, who is 10 years old. And right now I am just feeding them various fish. Let me get a look squid. in that bucket there. See, why don't you show us what you have Got here. Got some squid. Okay. Capelin. These little guys are called silver side. You can see the silver stripe. We've got a new kind of fish that they seem to like is the trout. It's a good looking trout. And this, you can't see the head, but it's a part of a herring. So that's what we feed them. Okay. Yeah, so Joe asked what kind of food do they eat? Here at the zoo, we feed them fish. Fish. And you know, to enrich their curiosities and diet, we'll throw in egg, eggs in there, different kinds of seeds. Um, and in the wild, they are an opportunistic type eater. They'll eat frogs, fish, birds, small mammals, um, pretty much anything they can get their paws on. So, but here they have more of a strict fish diet. Uh, Lincoln is eight. How, he wants to know how big do they get? So Spencer right here, he's probably the maximum size that the North American river otter gets. That's um, upwards to uh, 15 pounds. So 10 to 15 is usually the size that they'll get. And they're, they're yeah. kind of a, a middle sized otter. Yes. There's some smaller species and then the sea otters are pretty big, a good catch. Yeah. And uh, the giant otters that you find in South America and mm -hmm. Africa and Asia are can be quite large. Those can be like- Over six feet, yeah. or up to six feet long or something like that. Um, and so these guys are actually, I mean, they're naturally found in the Midwest throughout the United States. At one point in time, they were endangered due to fur trapping. Um, otters are very well designed to be in the water, web feet, strong rudder-like tail, and then that thick fur traps air um, inside right up to their skin. So during the winter when they're swimming, they can stay warm and the water never touches their skin. Um, so trappers would kill these guys and use their fur for fashion. But in the 90s, uh, there was a reintroduction program especially in Illinois um, and through time and preservation and conservation efforts, they are now off the endangered species list. Uh, Bobby has a good question. She wants to know where they go in the winter. 
they stay right where they are. They'll swim in the winter. Like I said, they are uh, designed to stay warm during the winter, even if they're swimming. Um, during the winter, they'll probably get thicker coats. They have a double layer coat. Um, so yeah, they stay outside during the winter too. Yeah, they love it. They, they will sleep on the ice. They will swim under the ice if the pool freezes. So it's, it's great. Um, Grace's mom is watching like she usually does. Uh -huh. She wants to know how that herring lost its head. We chopped it off on the, on the cutting board. Uh, the herring are, are a little bit too big to feed them all at one time. They'd get one big fish and that would be about it. So we do chop those herring up into smaller pieces. Yep. Uh, Danielle, who's five, wants to know how long they're pregnant for. That's a good question. Do you know that, Eric? Well, otters are kind of funny in that uh, the babies are born in February. Oops, let me zoom out a little. And um, right after the uh, baby's born, within a, a week or two, mom will go out and mate with a male right after that. And that egg will get fertilized, and then her body will put the brakes on it. And it'll just sit inside of her, fertilized, but not doing anything until, I don't know, probably November. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure exactly when that is, but it's three or four months. Um, and then in November, the, the mom's body will start developing that egg and turning it into a baby. And then in February, we have uh, the babies are born. And when they're born, they have some fur, but their eyes are still closed. Yeah. They're pretty helpless. So a lot of times those, um, those animals that have helpless babies, uh, something like a dog or an otter or a mouse or a rat, their pregnancies are real short. And something that has a full developed baby, like an elephant or a giraffe or something where they're up and walking around fairly quickly, a lot of times those pregnancies last a lot longer. Uh, we have these little opossums here at the zoo uh, they're very small, and when the babies are born, because they're a marsupial, the babies are about the size of a thumbtack head. Um, they're only pregnant for like a week. It's like 10 days. So that's just to contrast with something like these otters or uh, something larger. That was a long explanation, yeah. too. Um, Grace's mom wants to know if we'll keep the baby or if she'll go to another zoo. Babies are sent out. Um, Tallulah's been with us for a while. She's been a good breeder for us, um, really helping that the uh, the gene pool for otters. And um, I I would think that the baby would go out once she's old enough. Yeah, I'm, usually we don't have a baby if by the time mom is ready to give birth the next year. Right. So at the very latest, like in January will ship out last year's babies. So um, hopefully this fall yeah. we'll find a home for her. Um, they are part of the SSP. Um, so the they'll, SSP will get together and um, um, decide where the, the best place to ship everybody is. Yep. Um, so hopefully this fall. Yeah. Here, that's a bit. Just the juice. Fish juice. Uh, Cody wants to know if the zoo is open. Yes, it is. It is open right now. Uh, we're open every day of the week from 9 until 5. I think last admission's around 4, 4.15. Um, so you can come out. We do have some extra restrictions. One of which is that um, you have to wear a mask the entire time you're here. Yep. Uh, the buildings are closed, so unfortunately you can't go see the rainforest or zoo lab. And uh, we have a one-way path. So uh, we don't have any guests right now, but you'll walk up the hill here past the Guanacos. past the Guanacos. And you can see that exhibit down there is our uh, Eurasian eagle owls. And then here's the pathway in front. You'll go around the Topher building 
and then down what we call our back drive down the back of um, the cow yard till you hit zoo lab and then you'll go around and see the wolves and stuff mm -hmm. so uh, Grace's mom says do we ever release the babies into the wild uh, no we've never no, I've never heard of us doing that um, not to say that other facilities wouldn't but as far as our babies are concerned we do um, send them to other zoo um, AZA zoos right Usually there's so many other zoos that need otters for their exhibits that um, they have trouble sometimes filling those requests. So those babies will all stay here uh, in zoos. And they're not endangered enough anymore that we need to do releases into the wild. Uh, when, they, when they were doing the release program, they were catching animals from further south, like Louisiana, yeah. where they were always in um, high numbers and then bringing them up here. And now they've bred so well that some places are starting to allow trapping again. Yeah. Uh, Bobby asks, do they stay in packs? Do they stay in packs? So usually with otters is that there will be a mating pair in a territory. And as the babies get old enough, they kind of kick them out on their own and then have their next pups kind of like what Eric was saying is about the time when we will get rid of our baby girl here. But uh, it's usually just a family group. It's not multiple breeding uh, pairs of adults. It's just a single pair within a territory. Um, Cody asks what the lifespan is and do they have a varied diet? So with it out in the wild, the average lifespan of a North American river otter is 10 years but within captivity they can live up to 22 years so big big difference there's a lot of things out in the wild that these otters don't experience in here that will hunt them that will kill them um, so these guys are living a luxurious life living a long time um, and and as i had mentioned before in the wild they're very opportunistic so they'll grab whatever they can catch rodents fish frogs snakes birds you name it within here we mainly feed them fish sometimes the occasional egg and some mixtures of seeds as well yeah not here but at another zoo i used to work at we would actually feed them carrots and some other vegetables yeah so they do eat a lot of stuff where's the baby baby's playing by that yellow tube She's up in the, in the, oh, she was in the middle. Yeah, if you've been uh, following our videos, way back in March, we did an update on the baby. And, and when Grace did that, they were literally still staying in the um, nest box all the time. And so between March and now, that's about four months, uh, they've grown enough that she's almost, she's about two thirds full grown, I yeah. think. And, uh, Definitely moving around more, being not so shy of the water as she was at first. So. Yeah, and she loves dad. She follows dad around everywhere. Yes, yeah, she does. Um, and he doesn't seem to mind too much. So. Yeah, he's been a real, real good dad. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Grace's mom says, how many are in a normal litter? Uh, two. I mean, can they get upwards of three? It Maybe, but I, what I've seen is typically two pups. I think we had triplets one time, right. but generally we have two or one. Um, and this year we had two, but all, unfortunately just the, the girl survived. Yes. So, all right, well, we're gonna, we're gonna get going and let the otters get back to yeah. doing their otter things. But thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time seeing one of these we try to do them at 10 30 in the morning uh, but we're going to be putting out a schedule every friday or so letting you know um when we're doing them um if there's something you really really want to see uh let us know and we'll try to we'll try to do some sort of facebook live and answer your questions and we've done a whole bunch if you missed any of these or most of them they're all on our facebook page they're also on our youtube channel 
youtube.com slash Miller Park Zoo. Um, but there's a couple months worth where we were doing three or four a week and um, quite a few of the animals here at the zoo. And um, don't forget to come out to the zoo since we're open. And then um, if you could help us out, we've got a donate button at the bottom. They're all hiding from me. <laughs> um, and I, I didn't have a chance to grab it, but Grace made a necklace with some skin, some shed skin from the our big reticulated python. And it's a really pretty necklace and I forgot to bring it to show you, but if you do donate, we're still gonna draw a name for that um, in the next couple weeks and you could uh, win that necklace. So if you could donate just through that Facebook button, that's all you gotta do. And we will uh, draw a name in a couple weeks. So thanks for coming in. Thank you, Keeper Ann, for helping out. Yeah. Hopefully you'll be back soon. Of course. And uh, watch for the schedule on our Facebook page. We'll be doing one next week. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.